What's up everyone, Brother Darkblade here with a patch information video for Space Marine 2. This is regarding patch 4.0, which was released today, which is the 17th of October, and is around the 10 gigabyte mark, depending on what system you are using. I play mainly on PlayStation 5, so it was around 9.9 .9 gigabytes, so the other systems are probably going to be similar. So in this little video, we'll be going through the patch notes, bringing you the information on what has been added to the game and changed, so on and so forth, as well as thoughts and opinions on those adjustments. So first of all, hi Space Marines, the latest patch is here and brings new content along with various tweaks and improvements. Make sure to read the full patch notes here. First of all, for new features, a new operation has been added to the game, Operation Termination. This new operation takes place on the planet Kodaku, which is the first jungle planet. A new dreadful foe has arrived, which is the Herophant Biotitans for anyone who knows their Tyranids. It says to make good use of the artillery in the area to annihilate them. So it looks like we're not going to be fighting them one on one per se, but instead operating big guns to bring them down. But they are titan class creatures so yeah we're gonna need some big guns to bring them down next up for new additions they've added lethal difficulty for the pve operations mode this is one above ruthless difficulty the highlights of this include that ammo crates now have limited refills per player so no longer will the ammo crates grant you infinite ammo on top of that, the Majorist enemies, which are the Tyranid Warriors as well as the Rubric Marines, they can become enraged, and when they are enraged, they become more deadly and a lot harder to kill. Next up, and a big one, Armor Restored from Finishers only applies if you stay close to your Battle Brothers. At the game's release, I used to always yell that, stay together, it's easier if we stay together, yada yada yada. Uh, it looks like they're actually implementing a mechanic to ensure that we stay together at least on the harder difficulty. The downside of this obviously is depending on your team composition. For example, if you're, there's an assault marine and a bulwark and a sniper in a team, the sniper is obviously going to be staying back most of the time using its uh, sniper rifle. It's not going to be near the Battle Brothers. Um, so there could be some issues there when it comes to the sniper wanting to restore armor. The assault and bulwark obviously being close to one another in close combat, uh, that's not going to be an issue. Uh, I guess we're going to have to test and see the distance to which this armor restored is applied. But yeah, it's a, a change I think some players are not going to be happy with. But um, yes. Let's keep going. Finally, for completing Lethal Difficulty, we will be rewarded with new cosmetics for our Marines. Finally, for new additions, they've added Photo Mode in Operation, but this only works whilst you're playing solo, which is understandable. Also, characters will now follow the camera with their eyes, so it gives you a little bit more extra flair. This is great for when it comes to creating thumbnails, so I'm happy about this, but it's a probably a minor update for the majority of players. But moving away from new additions, let's talk about gameplay and balance tweaks. First of all, the melee archetypes. Fencing weapons. The perfect parry window will now have the same duration as balanced weapons, but it will start from the first frame of the parry animation. So whilst it will still be easier to parry with fencing weapons, it's not going to be as powerful as it once was. Also, yes, I do know parry parry. There's you know, American versus UK English way of saying it. Unfortunately, I say Perry because that's how it was. I was brought up. Anyway, anyway, that aside, it looks like fencing weapons have received a little bit of a nerf here, but I don't think it's going to influence many players, to be honest, as I think most players have got used to the Perry mechanics now that they should be able to still make efficient use of fe fencing weapons and still be able to perform quite adequately. Next up with melee perks, there have been some changes to charged attacks for the chainsword, the power fist and the combat knife. Basically, they've all been given a significant damage increase when performing these charged attacks, which is great news, especially for the power fist. Next up, the tactical marines, the all spec scan, the basic all spec scan, the bonus damage on bosses has been reduced by 30%. This I understand because with the right build, the all spec scan could mark a boss and enable a team to burn down a boss so fast it was kind of crazy so i can understand why this nerf came in to effect but it's still a little bit sad to see especially with lethal difficulty it would have been nice to try the old all spec scan 
on the lethal difficulty to see if it helped or not. But uh, yeah, anyway, moving on. The Melter Charge, which is the Melter Bomb. The damage to bosses has been reduced by 70%. So another nerf to the Melter Bomb. It was kind of nerfed a little bit in the last patch as the Hive Tyrant had its resistances to this weapon or equipment uh, increased. And now it's been nerfed even more. It looks like the Melter Charge is going to be used more for wave clearing or extremist enemies more than actual boss bosses. Anyway, moving on to the enemy spawn director in PvE. They've tweaked the idle spawn, so the enemy's just standing around not doing much. Also, enemy variety within waves is now less random, while enemy variety between waves is bigger, so we should get to experience the full roster of an enemy faction. And finally, the extremist enemies can now spawn and have additional enemies with them. Extremist enemies are your zone ropes, your lictors, ravagers, chaos terminators, those kind of enemies. Next up, moving on to difficulty. Now they've made a few changes to the existing difficulties in the game, including ruthless mode, which has the same ammo, well, ammo crate debuff or nerf, if what you want to call it. Basically, ammo crates have limited refills per player. And the, on ruthless difficulty, player's armor has been reduced by 20%, which is quite a survivability nerf. Finally, Substantial Difficulty, which is the one underneath Ruthless, the player's armor has been reduced by 10%. Again, another nerf to our survivability. Now, there are a lot of nerfs here, and players may be worried, but the notes from the developers go as follows. With Patch 3, we have noticed that Operations Mode became noticeably easier. I agree, especially with Chaos Operations. We are happier with what we have right now compared to what we had at release before Patch 3.0. Chaos missions were so unpopular. Still, we think that currently Operations Mode is a little bit too easy. Overall, these changes are going to make Operations Mode harder, but it's difficult to measure by how much. We continue to monitor these changes and will continue to adjust the balance of Operations Mode. This is not the last change. Uh, I can see what they're doing here. They're kind of testing this new difficulty with the, the, the nerfs and such. But I do agree that operations mode was becoming easier and easier as we were leveling up our characters, weapons and so on and so forth. Um, so this is going to be interesting until we get the next update. But anyway, let's move away from the PvE operations mode to talk about PvP. Now, there's only three changes here. First of all, they've increased the delay between announcer messages in the PvP matches. Also, the starting animation of the grapple launcher for the Vanguard is now shorter in PvP. And finally, they fixed a bug with the power fist in PvP that was dealing too much damage when you performed, sh when you performed short charging attacks. Sorry. So a few changes to PvP there, but... This patch definitely seems to focus more on PvE than PvP. I know there are going to be more balance changes and adjustments to the PvP mode coming up. For example, I know they said they were going to rework the Assault Marine in PvP, but it seems like I said that this patch isn't focused on PvP. Next up are changes to the AI. First of all, enemy dodges have been adjusted, globally replaced full invulnerability, on dodge moves of enemies with heavy melee damage resistances and the rubric marines with bolt guns, the disengaged teleport move, the max distance has been slightly reduced. They've also made various customization adjustments, they've added more colors as well as more decals, so on and so forth. I won't go into details here as you can see them on screen or the only thing I will say is though that they promised us that we could customize the lenses, the eye lenses on our marines helmets but it seems that it's not coming with this patch. So that's a little bit of a shame. Anyway, moving on to levels, there's only one change to the Vox Liberatus mission, which the demon host. Now, I don't quite understand what they mean by this, but they disabled respawn until the last altar in the final area. Now, do they mean respawns with us or respawns with enemies? Uh, we're going to have to do some testing for this one. Finally, there have been some general fixes, which some of these are quite interesting. Example, the first one, they fixed a bug where the Assault Marine perk Ascension could kill its owner. This happened to me as well as a few friends, as whilst playing the Assault, we would suddenly explode or it looked like we banged our head on the ceiling or something like that. Oh, fuck you. Did my assault troop just bang his head on the ceiling? Uh, 
it turns out it was a bug with the the perk so this is fixed and no longer should our assault marine be um randomly exploding shall we say they also fixed a bug with the sniper perk targeted shot it wasn't always working in some cases, they don't specify much more than that. They also fixed an unintended animation cancel with the bulwark by using the block which allowed the class to perform faster attacks. They also fixed an issue with the tactical marine perk close targeting not triggering properly. Additionally with the tactical marine they fixed a perk radiating impact, basically this wasn't triggering properly. They also fixed an issue with the sniper perk guardian protocol, the cooldown wasn't working properly. They also fixed various sound issues, issues with the trials. They fixed a bug that was causing loss of save files which is very much needed. I'm so sorry if you lost your save files on this game. Uh, always back up your save content on the cloud if you can. I'm just glad that they fixed it. I'm sorry though if you aren't able to get your save data back. They also fixed some description when it came to the Thunderhammer perk, Patient Rewarded. And there have been various minor UI fixes, animation fixes, all that good stuff. There have also been tech fixes as well, which are, you know, issues with disconnecting from other players, all that good stuff with stability and performance. Now, as always, I'll leave a link down in the description below where you can go check out the full patch notes for yourself. But overall, this patch is interesting. I am surprised with the amount of nerfs that they've introduced in this patch. But I do agree with them that they had noticed that operations mode was becoming easier and easier. Now, that's bound to happen when a player levels up their characters and plays the game more and more. So, if... I'm wondering if the nerfs are too much. We'll have to wait and see. I'm sure if they are too much, we can give the devs feedback and they will adjust it as needed. But this is going to be an interesting season, put it that way. We'll have to wait and see how this all goes. But anyway, please tell me, what are your thoughts on this patch? Hate it? Love it? Are you enjoying the new operation? Like I said, leave a comment down below. And until next time, I've been Darkblade bring you a patch information video regarding patch 4.0 for Space Marine 2. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.